That's me and Mike. I've got him on video now, so give Mike, Mike say hello quickly. Mike, say hello quickly to everyone. Now. Yeah, okay. Everyone's turned off. Everyone's went to audio. Look, we're going to talk MMA, have a bit of a <laughs> kick back and relax and chat. Yeah. Okay, so here we go. Ladies and gentlemen, we are live from the Isle of Man in the UK. This is John and Mike's M. M.A. Corner! Okay, like we said, ladies and gentlemen, we're just going to kick back and chat MMA today. Mike, uh, let's let's start off with a somber kind of topic. Ryan Jimmo, uh, a, a former UFC veteran of the game, 34 years old, involved in a hit-and-run incident, sadly passed away. It's another, another life lost to a stupidity of human beings. That shows what a ridiculous human race we are, but... Look, it's a waste. It's a shame. His debut in the UFC is one that will go down for a long time when he knocked out Anthony Paroche in, oh, no. I think it was like 10 seconds. I can't remember off the top of my head now how quick it was. Then he did the dance and just just a nice guy as well. It seems everyone had great positive things to say about him. I mean, I, I, I met him a few times and I can, for anyone that, doesn't hasn't seen me before. I'm not the tallest guy in the world. And I remember getting a photo with him and we're in a restaurant and he stood on the bottom step and I stood on the top step and yeah, he was still taller. But do you know what? He, he was like, yeah, I, I was a fan of him. You know, just, and it's upsetting, you know, like some of the reports that are coming through that there might have been a bit of a discussion between him and the people in the other car. And then as he's walking away, they then run him over. You know, it's scum, basically. Subhuman scumbags. He'll be remembered for the great things, really, that he's done in the sport. I'm sure the UFC will probably do uh, like a little little video on the Eddie Alvarez, Rafael de Sanos card coming up shortly um, on International Fight Week for a little remembrance thing, like they did with Kimbo, etc. But... Uh, as on the whole, it was a sad, a sad news to hear. Uh, we wish our, our best to all his family and relations, really. You know, uh, it's just a shame we lost him at such an age. He probably could have done a lot more for the sport outside of competing. Anywho, we're going to move on because we don't want to stick around on a somber mood. We're going to go to Bellator recently. There's a couple of, a couple of big wins from a uh, perspective of for Bellator, worked out quite well, really. You know, they had Rampage Jackson win, Matt Mitrione win, and Michael Chandler win. Three names who they would be looking at and as their investments within their company. You know, Michael Chandler, since Will Brooks went off to um, sign with the UFC, it was ideal that they had Michael Chandler in. Fluent English, uh, obviously not being like from Russia, being they can't, break, they can't understand language. He is a, a very good guy to sell for the promotion. I know that he lost, obviously, to, you know, Will Brooks, but, on hold, it's a good one to have uh, yeah. to sell. Matt Mitrione winning is good for them because if you think yeah. about Benson Henderson yeah. came and lost, mate. So it's good that he won. And uh, you had Rampage Jackson win as well. So it's a good thing that he won, even though he wasn't that impressive and shouldn't have won. It, we got us a, a questionable decision victory, let's say. Will he stick at heavyweight? Yeah, but I, I think if Rampage get down to 205, I'd just prefer him to be down there. Yeah, I, I think it's, I mean, I think it's one of those ones, it depends who the fight is, you know, and, and let's be honest, a heavyweight, okay, does he fight Czech Congo? I, I doubt it, because they used to be training partners for a long time, um, so I can't see that fight happening, unless there's something going on behind the scenes that I don't know about. The Matt, Matt Mitrione, you know, I, I don't know how that would go down. I think it would be fun. Uh, yeah, know. yeah, it would be fun. I just, I think with Matt Mitrione, what they probably want to do is not match up with Rampage. They probably want to try and get Matt Mitrione a couple of wins, uh, probably get him for a title shot. I don't know how long Rampage is going to be with Bellator. Who knows if Rampage maybe wants to be fighting out his contract with them and going back to the UFC. I would think so. The fact that he actually tried to fight for the UFC and... Says a lot, yeah. He'll probably try and honour his contract and then say thanks and goodbye. But, yeah, it's... 
you know, and, and there was a couple of good highlight reel fights, you know, amongst those three fights, you know, it, two of them were... Well, know, Michael Chandler's of, right hand, Michael Chandler's right hand landing, that was beautiful, that was, oof, but... And it's something he needed, he needed that, like, like you wouldn't believe, you know what I mean, he needed like, yeah. hole in his ass, like, and, um, yeah, that, that'll do him the world of good. But also the Bellator, the world of good for their certain, the kind of brand named guys, the kind of guys they need, I suppose, to help push that promotion on the grand scheme, especially in the States, having guys who they can use as, uh, use to sell their company, you know, use these people as brand names. So it's a good thing for them. Uh, let's let's go on then, mate, to talk about, I'll tell you what, before we talk about International Fight Week coming up. I was just going to say, the Matt, Matt Mitrione fight was fun to watch. But, you know, he, to see him get as dropped as, heavy, as heavily as he did and then come back, yeah, class fight. Now, let's, my, before I said before, let's talk about a future event that's coming up before we talk about International Fight Week. UFC, I feel sorry right now for UFC 201 because UFC 202 <laughs> Is absolutely eclipsing it, and no one's. It is the middle. It's the middle child of the UFC. <laughs> it really is, Mike. It is. Yeah, it's, the first you think? it's not the young last You got Robbie Lawler fight on the card. Who, let's be honest, Robbie Lawler is. Well, it's, it's Robbie Lawler, and you got Demetrius Johnson, who is a maestro whenever he fights, and you just sit there and you go, "These guys are getting looked over because 202 is turning into like UFC 200." It's just getting better with every fight they're adding. They've just recently added Tim Means. They've added Cody Garbron on there. You've also, like we said before, you've got uh, Anthony Johnson, Glover Teixeira, uh, Damian Maya, Carlos Condit, uh, the Neil Magny, and uh, who they got? Uh, they've got Neil Magny on. I can't remember who's fighting now. They've got it's already shaping up to be a card and a half to go to. Yeah, you know. like Nick, Nick, Nate Diaz and Conor McGregor itself. The fight was going to be enough to. Probably promote yeah, yeah, yeah. and sell it, but they're backing it up. I don't know if they're backing it up because just in case, but they're backing it up with some cracking, cracking bounce. Yeah, you've got, you got three, is it three or four good well weight fights on that card? Already. Neil Magny, Damian Meyer, you've got Tim Means, three off the top of your head, but I can't remember every fight that's on that card. Well, They've got that many fights um, on. Oh, they got, it's not Matt Brown's not on that card, yeah, is he? So, yeah, Neil Magny, Damian Meyer. Um, Donald Cerrone. Yes, Donald Cerrone against uh, Rick Story. Yeah, and obviously you've got uh, Nate Diaz against um, Conor McGregor. Conor McGregor, yeah, that, that's well to wait as well. Yeah, I forget it. I don't know why I forget that's at well weight because they're not well weights, but yeah. They'll be scaling at the one seventy one mark, you know. Or a few pounds under. <laughs> you know, it's exciting times, really, when you look ahead to the future of what what bounce are potentially coming up. I, hey, look, I'm absolutely jacked for those fights coming up. I don't know about you, anyway. Well, it just goes to show you don't have to have a title fight. You know, title fights are all right, but at the end of the day, you're watching two guys fight each other. And as long as that has that got your interest, it doesn't matter if it's a title fight or not. Like... Okay, so Brock's going to fight Mark Hunt. There's no title fight. I'll be looking forward to that more than some title fights I've watched. Yeah, I'll agree. I'll agree, yeah. Looking yeah. forward to it. Um, it. It does. It does. Title, it's Brock. It's, Brock is a needle mover. Exactly. And, and it's Mark Hunt. You know what I mean? It, it, like, what, what fight has, has ever been boring that Mark Hunt was in? Uh, oh, tons, mate, tons. I, I don't even remember most of his fights. They're just... Uh. <laughs> you know, the, he, he is the master of the walkaway. And a few more people are employing that walkaway now. Now, that is dangerous. <laughs> that, that, that's a silly move to make because... I was, was going to say, I can't like wait Hunt. for the first person to walk away and then the guy just gets up and carries on. Luke Barnard did it in Manchester, remember, against Andrew Craig? Yeah, yeah, started celebrating. Twice, yeah, wasn't it? Was did he do it twice in the fight? He did it twice, yeah. There you go. Because we were yeah. that, I remember because we were live, and we were, everyone saw the cheer, and he just I was, I was his body. to his corner afterwards. 
Yeah. I, I, yeah, I was chatting to his corner afterwards and I was saying like, what's that? He says, yeah, we're going to have to have a word with him about that. <laughs> and I thought to myself, yeah, at the moment he's got 50 Gs that he's trying to give himself a hangover with. But... <laughs> yeah, it was... Yeah. Dude, but the thing is, Mark Hunt, I think Mark Hunt's so experienced and knowledgeable in his power, not it's just power. He knows. He, he knows when they're out. He knows when they're gone, yeah. when to stop. And to honest, yeah, and, and, he, and even if the fight does carry on, he knows that he's spanned you. You know, you're, you're now spangled. And, you know, hey ho. But yeah, there was somebody else that did a walk away not long ago. And I thought to myself, class, now, who did I say that about? Such a class, I said. Oh dear, can't remember. Don't worry about it, Mister. You've got you got a you got an old memory. You let's not, let's not push it too much. Yeah. So, like, mate. Well, like I said, we, I felt sorry. I felt sorry for uh, two hundred one card because two hundred two. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. I'm already looking forward to two hundred two. I'm already sitting here thinking I can't believe I've got to wait for UFC two hundred two. But the thing is, we get a t- a taste, a taste because during International Fight Week, very shrewd bit of business. They're putting the Nate Diaz and Conor McGregor together for the presser for that card during fight week when there's going to be a lot of eyes on the whole week. Very smart, very good business move. I'm looking forward to that itself. You know, that will get you, that will get you juices flowing because what's Connor going to come out with? Is Connor going to say, I beat you for eight minutes and you got, you, you finished me because I did this. Yeah. He'll probably keep, he'll have to, he has to say that. But the thing is, yeah, there's been a couple of things that he's sort of been making noise about. He, there's one where he says like, he's been brutally honest. He said like, I underestimated him and I won't make the same mistakes again. Um, there's and there's also one that comes across where he's quite cocky and he sort of is almost as if he's justified his reasons for losing. Yeah. Um, uh, look, let's let's be honest, Mike. Between you and me, let's go out there. I want to say right now, I see Nick Nate Diaz having a far more enjoyable fight next time around. I can see Nate Diaz slipping more strikes because you'll have. His timing on point because he's had a full fight camp. I'll see him landing more shots in the first round. And I think he'll have a tempo in the first round that because he, he'll be able to keep that up the whole time because he'll be in condition. Now, the last time, like you say, he said himself, he said, I took the first round slow, then pumped it up in the second. He won't need to do that for that fight because he'll already have that condition. And I think I think we'll see an eight Diaz step into that fight in great condition. No matter what, doesn't matter what Connor is in, like Connor's been training with a, a grappling jiu-jitsu wizard. Yeah, well, that's cute doing that for three months, but uh, yeah, so Nate Diaz has been doing it for years and years. years and, yeah, yeah, you need another nine years and nine months to catch up. Like, well, I mean, when you've got guys training with Hicks and Gracie and Cron Gracie day in all the time, it's t- 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 there's yeah. no there's no replacement you for that. You can't play catch up when it comes to uh, the jiu-jitsu game. You know, you can go away and work on your striking and come back and be more defensive, etc. But mm. when it comes to jiu-jitsu, it's... It's clocking those hours in. It, it literally is clocking the hours in and just building up and building up that repetition, that movement, on the mat. fluidity. It's all about the hours. And there isn't enough time in that six months, whatever he's having, to, to do it. It just, it just isn't, you know. And look, I'm not saying Connor can't do well. I'm not saying Connor can't win. But I predict yeah. a far better. I predict a similar f- style of fight when we saw Nate fight uh, Michael Johnson, where Nate just lit Michael up. No matter how much Michael was, because Michael Johnson, by the way, folks, in that fight, he was super aggressive. He was very offensive and, and very, you know, he was going forward to, to hurt Nate Diaz. But Nate Diaz was just slick and smooth, and I, I see that kind of Nate Diaz coming against Connor this time around. Yeah, I, I don't think the fight's going to be any faster. I think it might actually last a little longer. But I think he'll be more calculated, more... Yeah. Yes, I think it'll be... Yeah, I'm with you, Mike. I think... I don't see Connor well, think... in the same way. I think Connor will actually try and pace himself a bit more, try and use accuracy more than power. Because well, that's... Be... Connor's always been known for... Connor's not got a high output... But uh, he's got a high accuracy because he, he times his, sh- yeah. his strikes. But I think it's, I think it'll be a longer fight. And if Connor's going to do that, Nate's going to probably just be able to pick him off a bit more. Then, yeah, it's. Um, I, I think there'll be moments where Connor has success, and uh. you know he might even be ahead going into the third round. But then I think Nate will then start to capitalise and 
starts but we'll, to Mike, we'll talk about that closer to the time because you know what? Anything can happen. Yeah, you know loads what? coming up before then. <laughs> loads coming up. And also, one of them can get injured. So, yeah, no, no one wants it to happen, but it could. Yeah. It could happen. Because yeah, no, 202 is... Stacked. Stacked. It's sexy. sexy. Card. It's a it's sexy you know, card. Let's be honest, ladies and gentlemen. We could have that one at the end of the year. Yeah. That, that's the sort of fight that you could have on in December. You know, like you get your... Uh, year end. Your year ending cards, which are... So for anyone that doesn't know what I'm on about, you've got International Fight Week, which is normally massive. And you've got the last or very first card of the year. Yes, yeah, so the first and, or last week. It's around the first or last weekend kind of time, yeah, of the year. Ish. So we, yeah, and they're, they're normally the biggest cards of the year, generally. Yeah. Um, this one would, I think, would easily sort of fit that mould. Oh, definitely. The fights they've got on it so far, you could. And, and the thing is, there's no title fights on that card. No title yeah. fights. That's what's so interesting about the amount of excitement for a pay-per-view card with no title fights. And the UFC, I think, are realising that they could possibly get away with that in the future. Well, you know, it's... Well, let's look, Mike, let's put it, for example, say Brock Lesnar, let's say, spit, let's throw it out there, Mark, Brock beats Mark Hunt. Let's just put it out there. You could stick Brock then on a pay-per-view card for a non-title fight against a top five guy, and that would be enough as a pay-per-view event itself with a handful of other good fights on with no title fights. It, 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 you, you stick that straight away in New York, wouldn't you? No. I'd say John Jones. When if he, I, I believe he'll beat Daniel Cormier, and he'll yeah, fight I, um, I mean, over to share. You have John Jones, the main event. Sorry, go and say that again. John Jones is the main event against uh, and uh, Rumble. Uh, Rumble if he beats Glover. Yeah, I mean you might, and also like it depends what. Connor does. I think the success of Connor. If Connor goes in there, let's say Connor goes in there and annihilates Nate. Mm -hmm. Okay. You've then got some straight away. You've got mega fights again. Um, you've also got a uh, happy old Sanos. Um, if he does fantastically well against Eddie, or or vice versa, you know you might have a lightweight fight coming up. Yeah. You know, for a title Connor, Connor always sells Brock always sells and especially when they're coming off success they do they do I'm just saying John Jones wants on a New York card he said it himself he's going to be on it he's going to be headline that card probably yeah yeah, yeah. Um, and I, I think as long as he can be medically fit in time and fight ready I think we'll also have Chris Weidman as well yeah I think Chris Weidman definitely uh, you'll have I'll have Quinter on it uh, Aljamain Sterling. There's a handful of guys. Uh, Gia Valente. Handful of guys like uh, kind of Long Island, Island, New York. Kind of... <laughs> What's yeah. that? You might even have Matt Serra trying to cut a little weight as well. Trying to fight Matt Hughes. I'd love it. Love it. Um, yeah, because do you know what? One. Yeah, I, I'd, I'd, I'd watch that one because Fuck, yeah. they're both they're, they're both from the same time. You know what yeah. I mean? You're not you're not throwing them in against some 21 year old. You know, and they like both want it. Kind of secretly both want it. You know what I mean? So I'll, I'm down for that. Okay, let's uh, let's talk about Mike. International Fight Week's coming up. There's three fight cards uh, from the UFC's perspective going on that weekend. So there is a lot to talk about. So let's let's try and touch on some of the card, uh, some of the fights on the cards, at least a little bit, and we can elaborate a little bit more next week about certain fights uh, because let's be honest, there's too many fights to talk about, but. Before we mention those, Mike, I think it's worth at least tipping our cap to and giving a shout out. Cage Warriors is on on Friday night, which I'm, I'm not I'm not dissing Cage Warriors. Love them, but they are going to get look overlooked because the amount of attention is going to be on International Fight Week. Yeah, it, yeah I, I, they will do. I mean, obviously, the one bonus they have got is going on that fight pass. So, again, it worked well the, the other night when it was a bit of a warm-up, shall we say. Exactly. It, it basically it finished and then it went straight on to the next one. It was it was like, just like a continuous kind of flow of you had EFN, Cage Warriors, UFC. It was like a flow of events, and that's what will happen on Friday night. You'll get Cage Warriors finishing, then UFC will start up. Then you'll get the UFC weigh-ins for two UFC 200. Then you'll get the fight card starting for 
Friday night fight card, which is the tough one, isn't it? Yeah, the tough tough card starts, and then it'll just flow. No, uh, oh, sorry for Friday. Yeah, sorry, I'm thinking Thursday. Yeah, fr- Friday is uh, the, the tough. Yeah. So that's what'll happen, and it will it'll work well. It will be good. It'll it'll get it'll get the juices flowing for the fight night card, um, and as well, I think it's good. I hope I hope that it gets a, um, attention stateside. People will go, oh, well, there's fight card on before. Let's put it on and watch it. I hope that happens because you've got some great fights on there. You know, you've got uh, uh, Brad Wheeler's fighting. You've got Darren Stewart. You've got Paddy Pimlet. You've got Chris Fishgold. Uh, I tell you, fun guy to watch Tim Wilde, and you've got Jack Marshman fighting for uh, the, for the vacant middleweight title. You've got. I'm, I'm, I know I'm, I'm being a bit biased mentioning British names there. I'm not mentioning uh, British guys who are kind of staple names of the promotion, so to speak. These guys are talented fighters. Uh, there's a lot of promise in them, so I'm looking forward to these guys fighting, seeing what they do, seeing how they perform. Because I think you'll see a lot more. Probably should be a lot more eyes on them. For this card, than there would have been maybe if the card was next week or the week before. Yeah, it, it might actually work like really well for Cage Warriors. You know, anyone that happens to be clicking on Fight Pass a little bit early so they don't miss anything. Well, it'll pop up anyway, doesn't it? You see, you get a little message pop up. Yeah, exactly. Well, you might, you, you'll probably find that there will be people that, that actually don't have Fight Pass at the moment or actually invest in Fight Pass that week. Because let's be honest, you, yeah. you, win, you win big if you're if you're doing your free trial, shall we say? That's the week to get it. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, if you, to get a week free trial, that that's definitely the time to do. You get, you'll get four events in a weekend, uh, and they might even have other shows on, which you know, going around the world because they have like Shuto and all sorts. They have all around. The, they might have other shows on. I just I just know them. There's, there's on so many live events, and the only, I, I love the can't keep up. I can't keep up. Well. Mike, I can't keep up. Yeah. It's ridiculous. It, like, oh. it, is, it is now a channel in its own right. Yeah. It's like you can literally switch on there and there's normally something on. I'd say, you know, I, I wouldn't say a channel, Mike. I would say a challenge because where you get the time to watch all of it, I don't know. Uh, you just give up on sleep. Yeah, no sleep, I no life. You, just give up you. on everything. Just get like a yeah. drip. And just watch fight pass. That's pretty much what. Like it's, I'm 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 finding it tough to catch up. I am playing catch up quite a bit on a lot of stuff. You know, they'll put they'll put cards out. They've like the Shuto card that was on last week. I haven't had time to watch that yet. It's it's not easy, but do you know what? There's a lot of content. It's a good thing because we'd be complaining if there wasn't enough content. So I'm never going to complain. I'm just saying it's there's a lot of content there. So it's it's good because you can touch. Go on. I was going to say, and also, you, you talk about the Cage Warriors things, we'd have already have seen two events that week. We'd have had the weigh-ins for, on the Wednesday, and mm-hmm. we'd have had the fight card on the Thursday. And the weigh-ins on the Thursday as well. Yeah, all right. So, yeah, three things. Jesus, there's a lot. <laughs> <sighs> yeah, get, get your charges ready, folks. It's yeah, And it's really cool. let me just have a think as well, if you think about it, on the... And the uh, presser is on the seventh as well on the Thursday. So you'll have the press conference, the the Connor and Nate press conference on the seventh, I believe. Exactly. So, it, so four it, four not, things will happen. Yeah, before you don't get many page press that are interesting unless it's Connor, and then it's worth a tune in. And especially with yeah, unless there's certain like, certain people are on. Yeah, uh, right, Mike. Let's let's talk about some of the fights on the international fight week. So, like we said, there's free free events. You've got a Fight Night, ultimate, uh, the Ultimate Fighter finale, and then UFC 200, okay? Correct. Right, a lot to get in, a lot of cards, yeah. a lot of fights. Now, they've packed out some of the fights on, on the cards because not you can't have stacked card every card, all right? They've, they've really no. pushed the boat out with UFC 200, let's be honest. So the Fight Night card itself, there's a couple of interesting bouts on there, but... Yeah, the Fight Night card. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm going to start getting myself mixed up. The Fight Night card itself. They got that's the main event is the um, Rafael dos Anjos and Eddie Alvarez one fifty five title fight. Now, I like that fight, title fight, but the card it's not too bad. It's not too bad. It, the Ultimate works. Fighter card. We know we're going to get mm-hmm. Ultimate Fight. It's going to be packed mostly with Ultimate Fighter contestants, and then you get a big show on UFC two hundred. Let's go to the Eddie Alvarez card, Mike, like I said. Is there any particular fights on that card for you that you're thinking, can't wait for that fight? 
I, I want to see how Joe Duffy comes back. He, he says that he lost his way a little bit, you know, lost his focus a bit. He says now he believes that, you know, he's found his purpose again. So, okay, if that is the case, show us where you got Joe. You know, I, I, yeah, yeah, he's fighting Mitch Clark. It's it's a fight that's winnable. Uh, I definitely think that. Mitch Clark is, is it's a suitable opponent for Joe Duffy in a sense of Mitch, Mitch Clark doesn't have any particular area that's huge. It's not like you're sitting there thinking, oh, he's just a deadly striker. He's a deadly grappler. He's, he's a very good all-rounder. So it's it's something that won't, like, his wrestling will could be a problem. Uh, if, for example, I, I just think, how will Joe Duffy handle it if he does get taken down and is getting a bit smothered? You know, like last time, he which, just didn't see... I was, was going to say, which is where he really came apart in the last fight. Yeah. Like Mitch Clark, you know, yeah, he, he does win his fights via submission. That's the other thing about it where I think Joe Duffy's jiu-jitsu is really, really high level, folks. It's He didn't get a chance to show it against just uh, Dustin Poirier because I think just Dustin Poirier, especially after that performance, you saw that Dustin was ahead of Joe Duffy at the time. He's just yeah. on a different... He's on a just he's just ahead of him on the curve, and it was the and wrong time Michael to match them up. Well. Sorry, Mike, what was that? that? I was going to say uh, Dustin Poirier also has that confidence at the moment. He actually is. You can see he's truly believing in himself at that weight at the moment. Yeah, yeah, I'm with you on that one. Uh, I think as well we'll see how. Yeah, Dustin Poirier 155 is looking great. Yeah, he is. Uh, I think it'll be interesting to see how Joe uh, Duffy does in that fight. I, I hope that we get to see him not get smothered by the wrestling. I hope that he's maybe worked on some things, especially because on the ground, I hope he's a lot more offensive on the ground. If he does get taken down, then he's just more of a nightmare, kind of yeah. kind of like a Carlos Condit-style-esque. You know. Sorry, Mike, what was that? Sorry, buddy. I was going to say, yeah, if he does, you know, if he does find that he's on his back, you know, I want him to have that aggressive guard that he can have. I fight the going on the radar, Mike. Uh Derek Lewis and Roy Nelson, that definitely will not be a humding, a boring, boring fight, will it? Let's be honest, mate. It's going to be one of them ones where you'll be getting matchsticks and putting them on your eyes and watching the fight like that because... You, you, you won't need to. Yeah, you don't want to blink. No, because you don't want to blink, Mike, is why. You'll be spraying water so you don't blink and miss anything because that fight could end within 10 Any seconds. Time. Yeah. Like... Right. Anything. Roy Nelson, we know, can take a hit. But the thing is, we know Roy Nelson can throw a hit. And Derek Lewis, you know, he, last thing you want to do is take Roy Nelson down because he's such a good grappler. Like, that's the thing. Like, Roy Nelson never bothered to use his main attribute, attribute which was his jiu-jitsu, which people still... He likes knocking people never, out, that's why. He just likes... He, but it's not that he not likes knocking out. He's just got the power that was just given to him. He just, yeah. he's got the, but the thing is, people are starting to suss Roy Nelson out, you know. Roy Nelson, what do you do? Okay, I'm going to circle to his, to my right or his left to avoid that power right coming. So it's a bit of a nightmare. Can Derek, will Derek Lewis do that? Will he make yeah. sure he keeps Roy Nelson out of range like um, uh, Alistair Overeem did? Alistair Overeem kept, he dictated the range. Alistair Overeem decided when to close it and when to, to keep it apart. And that was the problem. Like, Roy Nelson doesn't really do that. Roy Nelson just kind of thinks, I'm going to swing. If you're there, I'm going to hit you. If you're not, I'm going to miss. Um, another fight that um, we need to mention is my uh, twin brother, Alan Joban. Yeah, yeah. When people say... It's like looking in the mirror. There's no genes left to give to the second child. Like, that was kind of you, really, wasn't it? It's kind of like Alan Jaban got all the good bits and then all the bits that were left, like, you know, when he scraped the gene pool at the bottom, like, like what's the dreg, so to speak? It's kind of like what you got. It's, you know, you like the, uh, you like the, you like this child that the parents don't talk about. Sorry, Mike, what was that? We've got some looking DNA. <laughs> you do, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's uncanny, isn't it? Yeah, two eyes and nose and a mouth. It's it's, yeah. it's uncanny. So yeah, he's fighting yeah, Bilal Muhammad. And <laughs> he's fighting Bilal Muhammad now. The fight itself will probably not get the attention. It it, it I'm not saying it should, but it, that's a fight that can go under easily go under the radar. Bilal Muhammad. Look, we've had him on the, we've had him on the show a lot of times. We followed him in his Titan FC career. He beat Steve Carl, got the title. He got a, he got signed up to the UFC undefeated. He's going to be a tough test for Alan Jaban. You know, Alan Jaban, yeah. is a, he's a, he is a guy who will fight and he will bang. 
But Aljamain can get rocked. He can get, you know, he's a tough guy to fight. So yeah, I look yeah. forward to it because I know Belial's a condition for 15 minutes. I do look forward to that fight. I want to see how Belial performs because he is a guy that I, I, I do not overlook Belial in this fight. And a lot, he is the underdog. I'm not going to lie. I'm putting money on Belial because, you know, he's, he's a guy who can definitely win that fight that people won't realise. Yeah, he's... Yeah, Alan Choban does seem to throw a little bit more caution to the wind. But he makes for fun fights, so I'm looking forward to it. Also, I just want to give her an also mention to Mike Powell, who's having his 554 fight for the UFC. <laughs> he's the only person that's been in the UFC longer than the UFC has. <laughs> yeah, he, he, he actually created it, but he just doesn't want to take credit. <laughs> I tell you what, yeah, he's been around, and he's managed to keep that haircut all the way through. <laughs> That's what I mean. He's, had, he's he invented it back in the eighties. <laughs> I was gonna say he, he he refuses to let go. To <laughs> Crikey, yeah, he, he's had he, he's probably had a dozen cars since he's had that haircut. But I tell you what, if he if he let go of that haircut, I'd I'd feel I'd feel gutted. I'd be like, it's that's that's it, his it's part of him. Yeah, it, exactly, mate. Him. That's it. He is. It is part of him. And as far as I'm concerned, he's allowed to have that now. <laughs> yeah, are you going to allow it, Mike? Have you given it the seal of approval? Have you let him know? And I, I can't remember who he was against, but he won his last fight. And won it is, well. is, is, Mike Pyle is a badass, that's why. Oh, yeah, yeah, he's sick. <laughs> like, if you brought back, um, let's just spit around, like uh, Dwayne Ludwig. Dwayne Ludwig could still kick ass. You know, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You'd, be, you'd have to make sure that you were very much on point, should we say? As long as you match him up right, like Dan Hardy, if he comes back, Dan Hardy's like Brock Lesnar. You know, he's the new Brock Lesnar story. Is Dan coming back? Like Dan's talking about oh, Dan will definitely one fifty five because dude has lost some weight because he's went all like vegan and... he's not vegan. He's not vegan. He's not vegan. Oh, no. But he's gone like all that kind of yeah. Sort of like kind of veganish, whatever it is, but uh, all of the yoga and stuff like that. He has lost a lot of weight. Like when we saw him in London, was yeah, it was London, and I was like, dang, I was like, dude is small now. I was like, isn't like if he fought one seventy, he'd have a right nightmare because it makes you wonder if he'd come back as a lightweight. Mike, I just said he'd be fine at one fifty five. All oh, right, sorry, I didn't catch that. My apologies. Deaf bastard. Yeah, so he, he, he did say 155. He said that he'd probably come back at 155. He, he has mentioned that, so uh, I, I'd like to see that yeah. at 155. That's all the 155 division needs is another killer. <laughs> but, Cause yeah, because that, that left hand ain't going to... That left hand would have went anywhere. Uh, yeah. It's just... Medically, I think he's been cleared, but it's just... Is is he wanting it still? Is he still wanting it enough? Does he? What's he coming back for? Is he coming back to do a title run in the 155 division? It takes a long time to do a title run in the 155 division. Yeah, exactly. It's yeah. You you basically need to start jumping the queue with crazy fights, but it's whether you can get those crazy fights. But yeah, the, so on the main one, talking about lightweights, we have no, no, no. We'll go to the uh, tough, the ultimate fighter, mate, and then we'll do UFC 200. Well, I was actually going to mention Rafael de Sanos against Eddie Alvarez. Oh, sorry, I thought you meant the uh, UFC 200 card, buddy. Yeah, de Sanos and Eddie Alvarez. Let's not miss the main fight, shall we not? Yeah. Well, I was thinking about leaving the main fight for next week. Well, we can talk about it now, anyway. Nah, we'll leave it for next week. Because next week, we can talk about the main events. It's like Joanna and Claudia. Uh, oh, no, do you know what? Go on, and we'll I talk about it. What actually happened by the time this goes out next week? Well, I could do this on Tuesday. You see, that's all, buddy. But we'll do it. Go on, we'll do it, mate. Go on. Um, let's let's start with uh, Eddie Alvarez then, and and let's see how you feel about Eddie Alvarez having a title shot, and what do you think his chances are of beating Rafael de Sanchez are? I think it depends which one turns up on both sides. Uh, is it the Eddie that lost to Cowboy? Or is it the Eddie that came in and, um, come on, brainstorm, let me go. Ooh, why can't I, why can't I drag Anthony it? Pettis? Yes, yeah, exactly. Well, if it's the Anthony Pettis one, I'm going to be bored out of my fucking school. I know, that's what I'm kind of worried about. But he won't, Mike, I'm not being funny. 
He will not be able to do that to Rafael Dos Anjos. No, no, because if anything, Rafael will probably do it to him. Well, it's not that. It's, it's, I, couldn't see, I can't see Eddie. Get, if he get, well, I can see him getting down. I can definitely see him getting him down to the ground. But I can't see Rafael Dos Anjos staying at He's a higher level grappler with jiu-jitsu than yeah. Amphrey Pettis is. And I can yeah, definitely. It, it kind of has the feel that this one might stay on its feet quite a bit. It depends on where. Well, it's going to be a big, yeah, big cage. I think. Yeah. I think that. Yeah, I think it probably will stay up on the feet. But if I'm honest, I can see Desanos keeping that belt and 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 still defending that belt again. I can see him winning this fight. I just feel that Eddie Alvarez. He's been in the game a while. He's a great fighter. I've loved Eddie Alvarez for years. I just feel that I wish he was at the UFC four, five years ago, maybe. Because yeah, but... he's not a guy who's like been growing. He's been a top contender for years. It's not like yeah, they need to wait to sign him. In Bellator. Yeah, exactly. It's. I just feel that it's 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 a bit of a, it's. I feel like wasted him. Like we've waste, we've missed out on some great fights we could have had sooner uh, by having him in the UFC. But look, he could have been champion before by now already. You see, we did sign him. Anyhow, that's by the way. I just think Rafael myself. I don't know about yourself, Mike, but I, I would probably go for Rafael on this bout. Um, yeah, if you told me I had to put my house on it, I'd go for Rafael. Yes, you have to put your house on it, Mike. Yeah, it's Rafael then. <laughs> there we go. Uh, the Ultimate yeah. Fighter. There's a couple of stories on that. The, all I like about the Ultimate Fighter is it's not the fighters who have been on the Ultimate Fighter that the stories interest me. You've got Gray Maynard fighting on that card. He's stepping in yeah. at 145. Now, he's not fighting a guy who's like a John Lineker, but the thing is, Gray Maynard has been getting finished at 155 and he's cutting him. And he's a big 155er. He's not a small 155er. He's cut himself down to 145. I think that's a, that's a bad idea for Gray going down to 155. Later on in his career, it doesn't yeah. always work out well. I mean, I, I do like how they've been doing the weigh-ins, and it seems like they can continue to go down that road. I believe Vegas has agreed to go down that road. They have for this card. This For this card, sorry. For this... I think they are. I think they're doing it for all three cards. I think they are anyway. Yeah, I know they're doing it for USC two hundred. So I think I'd imagine they're doing it for the other two. Um, uh, but that was. I think the UFC requested it and then they allowed it. I think it's something that will be put in legislation maybe at yeah, the next yeah, um, Vegas the next meeting. Right. Yeah, but I still wouldn't agree with Gray Maynard cutting an extra ten pounds because yeah, he gets so four more hours to you, weigh in. I don't. Yeah. That won't make a difference. Yeah, what I was going to say was like, you know, when he's lost, he's he's lost quite brutally, and you think to yourself, with with that ten pound going, at, which is a large percentage of those sort of weights, you know, that tells me that that's only going to make you more susceptible to getting knocked out. Well, he's lost four in a row. Uh, like he lost four fights in a row, and he's still in the UFC. He's lo he lost out of the four. Three of them were knockouts, or TKOs, whatever you want to call it. Yeah. Uh, the one prior to that was the Frankie Edgar one. But you think, I since it's weird, um, Will Martin, when we had Will Martin on talking about me, and Will talked about it, Will said it, he goes, since him and Frankie fought, they went polar opposite directions. Yeah, Gray, Gray has cool. went this way, Mike Gray's went that way, and then Frankie's went up. Yeah, like, the only thing that's blemish on Frankie's thing is the old old decision, and that's it. Other than that, it's just... It's almost like, you know, in Legend, when you beat somebody, you take their power, their, uh, their, their you know, it's almost like that's what's happened with Frankie. You know, he took all that was good out of Craig. But I think those losses have really hurt him, and I don't see him coming back from that sort of damage that he sustained. I don't either. And the problem with Grey Maynard is... He's been, he's not had a finish for like, I think it's someone like nearly eight, nine years. Yeah. I'm not lying. Eight or nine years since he's finished the fight. And that is, that's something you've got to consider. The dude's not finishing people. He's been getting decisions since uh, like eight, nine years ago. Now he's been in a while and he's getting finished. It's kind of like there's a, there's a time and a place to hang it up, and I, yeah. I 
if he I, if he gets the win in his fight, like credit to him. If he gets the win, kudos, well done. But I, I'm questioning his morals for keep going. And another fight, look out for Mike. Then uh, what other fight on that card is interesting? You intriguing? You. Main event don't count except the main event. Well, you got Jake Matthews against Kevin Lee. Yeah. Jake, Jake Matthews, fun fighter. You know. Young, yeah. exciting prospect. Kevin Lee, young, exciting prospect as well. The pair of them, I like the both of them. I was annoyed when Jake was fighting Stevie and then Stevie had the visa issues, etc. And now it's Kevin Lee. I was, I'm, I'm just as annoyed. I'm like, oh, I like the pair. I like both. I like all three of those dudes. Can they just not find someone else? Yeah, it's, you know. Um, another one. Ross Pearson against Will Brooks. That's, you know, like, welcome to the UFC, Will Brooks. <laughs> you know, here's Ross Pearson, who on his day is, you know, formidable. Just- I think it's a more winnable fight for Will Brooks, Ross Pearson, than I think it's an easier fight than I thought he was going to get for his debut in the UFC. Uh, and because the, the, the reason why I put like that is again with me and Will chat about it. You look at the debut that Eddie Alvarez had when he stepped into the UFC. Who do you have? Yeah. And Will Brooks is the champ of Bellator and he's getting a short notice fight against was, Ross Pearson. Was he cowboy? Yeah. Was cowboy. He his first fight? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Ouch. So it's, there's a different level there, Mike. Cowboy, yeah, yeah. Ross Pearson. And Cowboy was well on his t- title run at that point, so... Yeah, and Ross Pearson isn't ranked, I, I believe. So, uh, I don't know, he isn't ranked, I don't think. I, I, don't think he, I, I, there, I don't really pay too much attention on rankings. Ross Pearson is a fighter, and I and the thing is, you've got to remember, is Will Brooks is a very good grappler. And Ross Pearson ain't good at dealing with grapplers. No, no, that tends to be what can catch him out. Ross likes to stand. If he ain't standing, Ross ain't super interested. And I don't know how much effort Ross has put into stopping the wrestling, but I think he probably needs to put more in, maybe go somewhere particular for it. I don't know where he's training at it. But, yeah, I, I got Will Brooks on this one. Uh, I'm not saying Ross can't win it. I just I just, I just, see Will Brooks win it, mate. I don't know about yourself. Yeah, it's a really hard pick this fight because – your heart's telling you to go for Ross, but... I'm not saying the heart, mate. I'm saying pick yeah. on pe- oh, logic, mate. What's logic saying? Yeah, you, you can't let your heart rule you. Um, I, I I think Ross gets it right. I think Ross... Oh, no. So, Mike, Mike I said use your heart, not your brain. I said use your brain, not your heart. Use your brain, not your heart. Do you know what? It's See, I, I think about the Ross that uh, for Paul Felder... But then again, Paul Felder just wasn't looking for the ground at all. No, Mike, exactly. If you get, okay, what you'll get the Evan Dunham, Mike. You're going to get Evan Dunham again. But a better yeah. grappler than Evan Dunham. The whole fight on the seat of his pants. Yeah. yeah. Yep, yep. If, again, if you told me to put my house on it, I'm going to have to go Will Brooks. Main event. Do you know what? The bookies, it's swinging both ways, this fight, you know. it's And it, and it will continue to. And you, do you know what? It's... That fight can go any way you like. You know, jo- Joanna is pretty much unbeatable, except for this girl. This girl has something. And the first fight was so close. So close. Oh, yeah. It... I, think, I want to forget the first fight. And, I, I, and, the, and the reason being is they're both two different girls since then. They're not... They're not the same ones that fought back then. They really aren't. You know, it's it, they're both growing in their own rights, and I feel that this fight won't be anything like the last one. I think that the both of them are just so more well rounded. Yeah, it's going to be a, a far more, greater think... chess match than it was last time. Like, like yeah. Joanna's takedown defense really has come on leaps and bounds, and that's the that's where the fight is going that's to be won, and the fight, fight is going to be lost. Like if. Yeah. Claudia cannot get Joanna down. I yeah. think that's a recipe for disaster for Claudia. But then if Claudia yeah. can get Joanna down, it's going to be a shit time for Joanna on the ground. So 
Especially if, yeah. if Claudia can get Joanna down early, Mike, that's the key. If she can get her down earlier in the fight, tire her out a little bit with her arms and yeah, grappling. Shots, Comes right. to the later rounds, the striking won't be as potent. I think that could open up a bit more opportunity for uh, Claudia. But yeah, I, 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 I can't. Put, if I had to pick, if I had to pick one of them to win, I'd go with um, Joanna purely on the. The, the sheer confidence and, and the, yeah. the mindset that girl has. She's just a fucking demon when she fights. Like, it's just yeah. scary. And, and she has that win. However close it might be, it is still a win. And also that she did drop her as well. That's what I mean. That's what I mean by keeping by keeping up standing. She's got, there is more chance of her keeping the fight standing. So if she can land her hands, that's what I say. saying. Like, it, she could just spend a few rounds picking her apart. And you got to think about the Valerie fight where she broke her hand in that fight and still went and finished the yeah. fight and was still throwing it. So if, if that hand, you know, if say she doesn't, her hand doesn't break again, she can keep throwing the whole time. I just, God damn it, she hits hard. It's oh, so fucking exciting. Like, holy shit, when she hits, it's like, oh, thunder. It's like thunder, man. Yeah, I, I just hope the hands... Uh last you know for the whole fight so that we can yeah. really sort of uh get everything out of them you know let's just... yeah but then again like I say claudia could just snap in a submission like that really her jiu-jitsu is so so tight oh but anyhow that's i caught ufc 200 mike we are not going to go through every fight in ufc 200 fuck no. that There's too many fights to go through what? we're going to talk about a couple, of, a couple of fights uh how about we should we leave the main event for next week? Yes, Let's, we can do. Yeah, we'll no. leave the main event. I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll leave the main event. We'll leave all three title fights. There's three, isn't there? Or two. I forgot how many fucking title fights are on that card as well. How about that? Um, there is... Misha, Kat. Well, you, you, you've got two proper genuine title fights and then you've got a... Oh, the interim fight in it. Sorry, that's it. There you go. That's why. Yeah, so you've technically got three fights. Okay. Yeah. And don't get me wrong, the Jose Aldo Frankie Edgar fight is worthy of a title. So It's a badass fight. It's a badass fight. Let's be honest. Okay, Mike, well, we won't touch on the three title fights. We'll leave that for next week. Well, we'll leave the main card because obviously we've got Brock as well. So, but, yeah, we'll leave the Yeah, main. all right then. All right, okay. then. We'll, leave, we'll leave that. Because okay, let's let's are... go. Let's go to the yeah. main. Let's talk about the main man, the guy who's going to literally. The, the reason why people are going to buy the pay per view to watch, uh, not pay per view. Sorry, people. The reason why people are going to tune in and watch UFC 200. There's only one man people are talking about: Enrique Marin. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Is Sage going to get back in the ring column? <laughs> Yeah. I'm not saying they gave Sage a lesser opponent to get a win, but they may have slightly given him an easier fight. Just thinking it out there. It's just an idea. Uh, I'm not saying they've put that on, but they might want their future poster boy to get a win on their biggest card because it'll help him and help sell the product. They also recently just got his own private UFC contract as well. Yep. So that'll add to his confidence, I'm sure. It might also add to the pressure because now he's got to live up to, you know, there's only a, a small handful of fighters that actually have these individual Reebok deals. So, but, yeah, you know, it's, it's one of them ones where I think he came off a loss and he gets a private UFC deal. That's strange. Anyway, uh, look. Do you know what? The very next fight is the one that's really got my interest is Katz, uh, Katz and Garno against Juliana Penna. That's the that's the main event on the prelims. I know that's that's not the next fight. On the, oh, you mean oh, you're not interested in TJ Dillashaw and half uh, half Hang on, I can't see that on here at the moment. That is a bantam weight. That's a bantam weight. Oh, sorry, no, they go they down, that son. The rematch, boom. You know you're getting yeah, half Hassan Asun Sal, mate, who is coming back after being out injured forever. And you think that he came he, since he's been away. TJ's been tearing up. Yes, he had his loss yeah, to Dominic Cruz. Defended it, 
Lost and then it. he's lost it. He lost, you know. And then the thing is, TJ's all, all out while Rafael's been away. Rafael comes back, gets a rematch with TJ. TJ's a different fighter since they last fought. Now, Do you know what I love about He does literally fit straight back in there again. He does. The thing is, for Rafael, he, he, at least it's a three round fight. It's not a five round. I think the last thing he could have wanted was to fight TJ in a five round fight. Been out for so long, that ring rust be killing you. I think TJ as well can have more of an output in the three rounds. And I want to see how he handles the grappling, the grappling aspect of Rafael Asuncao, especially there's a lot of momentum going with the Asuncao brothers, with Freddie Asuncao getting a title shot on Titan FC as well. It, it's there's there's a lot of um, probably a lot of good vibes going on yeah, around that yeah, whole team, yeah, uh, the whole kind of brotherhood, so to speak. Uh, I like that. I tell you one fight that. It, that's definitely going to shoot, shoot right under the radar is uh, Mr. Mr. Johnny Hendricks and Kelvin Gastelum. That one for me, we, it's a tough one. Back, are we not going back to me girls? Have we missed me girls fight? That's the main event on the prelims, mate. I've told you, you're not listening. Uh, are you fight you deaf again? Fight pass. You're now moving up to the. Uh, uh, I'm not. No. My, uh, uh, Juliana Penna and Kat Zingano are the main event prelims. Oh, sorry, I thought it was Fight Pass prelims. No. Okay. I'm not even touched on the Fight Pass prelims, mate. Look. Okay, um, I think Sherdog had given me uh, the wrong layout of the card then. They never have the right layout, mate. Nah, right, okay. Right, so... You never have the right layout, lad. I'm a bit... Um, Your down. way out of it. Look, you've got Katz and Garno. We'll talk about Katz and Garno and uh, Juliana Penner in a second. Calvin Gastelum, he is... A question mark in the welterweight division because what's what's going to happen with him? Johnny Hendricks, he got finished by Stephen Wonderboy Thompson. He's got a fight against the kid. He's got a lot of pressure in him. But Johnny Hendricks, if he can go back to his grappling and just get that takedown in, no, and especially against Kelvin, who Kelvin is a perfect guy to get a takedown in because he's so aggressive. I, I was going to say it's almost like uh, Johnny Hendricks is a better version of Kelvin Gastelum. You know what I mean? Yeah, he is. It's, it's just a, it's almost uh, like, you know, of, of all the people they should they could give Kevin a uh, Kelvin, sorry, Johnny Hendricks is probably the one they he doesn't really need because, yeah, they uh, I, and I'm still not sold on Kelvin. I mean, yes, he's had some good fights, but he's had some where I've gone. I don't think he won that one. I've not been wowed by Kelvin Gastelum yet. I'm still not being. Wild. No, no. I think the only wow factor I ever had was when he beat. Uriah Hall, but then again, am I sitting there going, am I sitting there saying, wow, he beat Uriah Hall, or am I sitting there going, wow, Uriah Hall didn't perform? Like, that was my, in my head, in my mindset. And, and also, we've also seen how Uriah Hall can be so hot and cold. Yeah, exactly, and that's, I that kind of, or, or, or kind of, it kind of confirmed my thought on, did Uriah Hall not just turn up on that night, like he said it himself, the whole Everything, everyone was kind of saying, you, you've got this, it's a shoe-in, you, you're going to win, etc. all this, but it didn't. So, um, yeah, I think I can see Johnny Hendricks get a win back here. I, I really can. I, I, uh, I think so. And I think yeah. he might actually even stop Kelvin. I, I would not be shocked. I can tell you what, Johnny Hendricks lands that hand. Oh, boy, you are not going to find that. that that's going to tickle. In this, in this fight, uh, see, I think we'll have Kelvin trying to land his own shots which then makes him susceptible to take a shot. And we all know that Johnny Hendricks only has to land one. Okay, you talk about your girls, or my girls, actually, but go on. Yeah, I'm super pumped for that. I want to see Kat Singano get in there and, you know, just see what she can do. She's got a major test on her hands, but that's what I think she needs. She needs to get that confidence back in her and prove to her that she can fight. Who wins? I, I don't know, but it's it's a great. I I like the scrap because the pair of them just they, they they don't go backwards. The pair of them are so aggressive. It's a question of who can be the more dominant aggressor in a fight. Exactly. I think you might end up seeing a quite a clinch based fight because they'll be so aggressive. It will end up closing the gap, and that's when I think you might see Cat come through. With the grappling, with the takedowns, maybe the wrestling, getting I Juliana Penner down. See how Cat fights in the first round, because she's a bit of a, a late start, you know, a slow starter. She's not quick out the blocks. 
which is where she came unstuck in the Ronda Rousey fight because she tried to do what she doesn't normally do and come out of the blocks fast. And well, that's the thing. You got to think. She her last fight was uh, Ronda Rousey, so she, she, I feel I feel she'll put that behind her because it was such a blip. It'll be pissing her off what happened. But what I mean is, oh, I'm, I'm I don't think sleep for a week. But it's not like right. she went in there for five rounds with. I got the living crap bit out of her, yeah, which would be a whole different mindset. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. She she made she made one mistake that ultimately lost her the fight. Yeah, she didn't go in there and get beaten for round after round or anything like that no. and prove to herself I'm just not good enough. You know, it was literally something that she doesn't normally do and paid the price. You know, it's a bit like a Chris Wyman doing a spinning heel, you know. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So if you want to put, it's almost like they've got the. It's almost like what they've done with the fight past prelims is they've got the they've got the golden oldies in, so to speak, the experience, the names, and they've just put them on there to help sell that prelim card. Yeah, I mean, like you, you you've got Takiyomi Gomi against Jim Miller. Jim Miller just yeah. manages to stay in the UFC. I mean, don't get me wrong, I I'm super happy that Jim Miller still is in the UFC. And Gomi. Well, yeah. <laughs> we, more so for Jim Miller because, like, we've been saying how he might be having that pink slip for the last two or three fights. And yet, he's he's still in there. Everything seems to have gone a little bit pear-shaped for him since the Donald Cerrone fight. Well, I just think about the the beating that Joe Lozon put on Gomi last time. You were, I was kind of like... And that was, he like, last year sometime, and I thought... It's just Gomi's just it's just toll. He's had a toll of fights on him. I just wonder like what yeah. what is he gonna do? Like what is Gomi gonna do? Is he just there for the sake of being there? I just and same with Jim Miller as well. It's like what's going on with Jim Miller? At one point Jim Miller was the guy who thought he could get a one fifty five title shot here. He was he was literally two 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 probably two fights away maybe from it and then again he's just went into that shows the depth though of the one fifty five division where you can go from the top to the bottom, not the bottom, sorry, but to oblivion. Two, two or three fights and all of a sudden you're not relevant anymore. I, I like Diego Musasi against Thiago Santos. It would it should have been Derek Brunson, which would have been a very interesting fight. But Thiago Santos, this dude is looking good of late and he's had a tough fight for um, Diego Musasi because the pair of them are going to stand up and bang. Yeah, it's, uh, it, yeah, it, it should be good. The, I mean, Musasi, it depends what Musasi we see. He was very impressive in his last fight. Very impressive. You know, he didn't lose a moment of that fight. And after we'd seen the success that... Uh, that um, ooh, come on, brains. I was going to say Thiago Silva. But it was... Thiago Santos. Well, he had three, he's had three, three wins in a row, Santos. He, he, he's beaten the likes of uh, Elias Fyodor, Steve Bosse knockout, which was obscene. You know, he, he's looked really good. And I think Gegard Musasi, he's a good fighter, yeah. And again, mate, you're right. It's like which Gegard Musasi turns up. Do we get the Musasi who we think should have been here since day one? Or do we get the Musasi we question and think, was he just good because he wasn't in the UFC? And now he's in the UFC. He's been exposed a bit more. We... Um, I, I don't think so. I think that he is every bit as good, but he's not consistent. And that's where you have to have consistency in the UFC. Yeah, he beat Talas Leighton in his last, his last fight. was and That's not a bad win. Talas Leighton's a, a decision win against Talas. Yeah, is a good, good win. And he, and he won it very well. Won it very well. Just shut down Talas Leighton. And... Like just beat the fight out of him. Tell us later, just didn't know what to do with him. But if you can't string a couple of fights together, all of a sudden you find yourself falling as fast as you you know as anything. It's in the in the UFC, you have to string those fights together. You have to you have to keep those wins going. But yeah, the main event was Joe Lozon and Diego Sanchez. It's one of them fights where why they hadn't fought each other before yeah. now was weird. Yeah. But the fact that they're fighting each other now, you just think. They're not fighting for anything. There's nothing the pair of them are going to get from this, as in, yep. they're not going to get a title it's fight. It's not going to get them anywhere particular. It's, it's just a fight. And with that, maybe, because there's nothing on the line, 
Um, might that open them up a bit more? Yeah, might, might we see a better performance from the pair of them? I, I say potentially with those two guys, there's a potential for one of them, if not both, to walk away with a bonus. They're, there, they, they're those sort of fighters, but it just depends if we have that fight on the night. Well, yeah, because Joe Lozon could take it to the ground and then yeah. we know what Lozon's like it's, on the ground. He's a wizard. Just a wizard. You know, it's... What he can do is, is match the fight. It's, it's a yeah. well-matched fight. It's just whether they have that fight. Yeah, exactly. Um, look, some great fights to look forward to. I can't... Like, I, there's so much going on back on the whole week. It's so hard to get your head around all the fights. And it's a good time to be alive. Yeah. It's it is, and that's why next week we'll look a bit closer at the other main fights, uh, the main card of two hundred. There's so many to get through. Might as well touch on it now because there's nothing. There's, it's 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 almost like when you look in the MMA world, it's like a tumbleweed going by at the moment because everyone's just waiting for this to kick off. Yes, yeah, so you can't get your excuses ready to take time off work or why you were late, yeah. or why yeah. you I look like a zombie work on Friday morning. What sorry? I, or why you look like a zombie, because I'm going to be looking like I'm going to be fucked. I will not lie, ladies and gentlemen. I'm going to be zero. I'm going to have bugger all sleep, but I don't, I'm going to probably live off. I don't drink coffee, so I'll have to find something like sugar-free energy drinks or something. I don't know what the hell I'm going to have to do to get through those, those days. Get, get, get some Pro Plus and just uh, swig them back. Just get off me tits. I'll just buy some cocaine, apparently. That's really good, or speed. Uh, Ask John Jones. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's what it is. I'm getting in. I'm getting in the mood for the fight. I'm getting, I'm getting connected with John Jones. <laughs> what, are you, what are you trying to say? Just, just, just bonding, bonding with one of the fighters. That's what I'm doing. Yeah. Uh, look, that's this week's podcast. Uh, not a lot of. Uh, there are all events going on around the world, but uh, there's, there's it's anticipation. The anticipation is already starting to seep in because. Oh. Happened last week for me. I don't know about you. It was already kicking in last week. I, I saw you in like itchy, sweaty palms and just, oh. And, and we're less than a week away. We'd, we'd be watching the fights now, this time next week. Yes, we will. Exactly. Uh, so we'll be back probably a little bit earlier next week. Uh, po- yeah, probably a little bit maybe earlier. Uh, we'll be sticking this out because of all the fights that are on. And I'll be more interested in watching the fights than doing the editing on here. So again, because we don't want to miss any of the fights. <laughs> yeah. So again, if you if you listen to the end, click subscribe. If you're listening on audio, click follow, click like, whatever, comment. You know, uh, that's it this week. So you know, thank you for tuning in, folks. And this is the first time we've done a video podcast, Mike, with the pair of us on. Are you going to comment, Mike, or are you just going to sit there and do nothing? My looks are enough. You do know you only are showing to everyone when you talk, though, Mike. That's good. <laughs> right. <laughs> Goodbye, folks. We'll see you soon.